What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, another solution. Guys, this is an excellent question. We see so often these collision problems, whether it's with a pendulum like this, where one object hits another object, or for, say, like a ball striking a rod, where these questions want to know, how is theta going to change when one object hits a stationary object? Okay, so this is very, it's a very, very important concept to understand. And all these questions, whether it's a ball hitting a rod or anything, whenever we're going to be changing the theta of this stationary object and how far it swings, right? They want to know how far is it going to swing and which one's going to lead to the greatest theta. We are looking at a transfer of momentum because in this case, with no outside forces acting at the collision, their momentum is going to be conserved. So in these three situations, whichever pumpkin has the greatest final momentum, that's going to be equal to the greatest theta. And the reason for that is because the greatest final momentum has the greatest speed. And the greatest speed has the greatest kinetic energy. And the greatest kinetic energy is going to get converted into the greatest gravitational potential energy or height. So these ideas right here all have to be spoken about when explaining in a clear, coherent paragraph length response. Now, we can also add equations to prove it, okay? So let's look at each one of these to prove which one is going to have the greatest final momentum. First, let's look at the embed. So in this equation, we have P before equals P after. That's the law of conservation momentum. Now, before, the pumpkin has zero momentum because it's not moving. So we have the, the M of the arrow and the V of the arrow before that is going to equal the mass of the arrow plus the mass of the pumpkin times some final speed of that system. So the final speed here is going to be equal to MA VA before, or the momentum before, divided by MA plus MP. So this is going to be one thing that we're going to have to relate. Next, let's look at pass through. So once again, P before equals P after. We have MA VA before. That is not going to change. But now it's going to pass through, and we're going to have the mass of the arrow, velocity of the arrow after, plus the mass of the pumpkin, velocity of pumpkin. So now the final velocity of the pumpkin after is going to be equal to MA VA minus MA VA after, so this would be final, this would be initial, divided by the mass of the pumpkin. Now from this relationship, I can already see that this is going to be less than this. So I already know that pass is going to be less than embed. And if you don't see that, just come up with numbers and, you, and you'll see. Like this, this relationship is smaller than this relationship. So the last thing we just need to look at is what about if it bounces back? P before equals P after. Once again, we have that same MA, VA initial, right? And that's going to be equal to the M pumpkin, V pumpkin after. Minus. Now, this is a minus because it bounces back, right? This leads to this bounce back, so it's going to go in the negative direction. So we have the M of the arrow, V of the arrow, final. So now we see that the final velocity of the pumpkin is equal to MA VA initial plus MA VA final divided by M of the pumpkin final. And we see that with this sum, this is going to be the greatest. And that, that makes sense. The arrow is going to go through the greatest change in momentum. And the momentum gained by the pumpkin, it has to be equal to the change in momentum of the arrow. So this right here is the greatest speed, greatest momentum. So that arrow is going to be the greatest. That is bounce back, number one right, for the greatest angle. And we knew that pass was greater than, uh, we knew that pass was less than embed. So if we look at the embed right here, we see once again, this is greater than this. So embed is going to be the second. And the pass is going to be the third smallest angle. And once again, think about the momentum absorbed by the pumpkin. When the arrow hits it, 
it bounces back. Greatest change in momentum is going to be the greatest momentum given to the pumpkin. When it gets embedded, the mass of the pumpkin and the mass of the arrow need to absorb all the energy, which is going to be transferred into some speed. But when it passes through, the pumpkin, yes, is going to take some momentum, but we need some momentum left for the arrow to pass through and continue to travel. Guys, this is a very, very common theory and something you understand. Like We know when we have a rod, the same thing. When a ball strikes a rod, this rod is going to go the furthest displacement theta when the ball bounces back. Hope that helps, guys. If you have any questions about it, leave them in the comments below. Hope you have a great day.